Something that's very scary to me about anti-Semitism that kind of comes in on the same ship as anti-Zionism is... What could drive you to do that? I would echo uh, Jordan Peterson here. It's always really stupid to think that there are some group of people that are uniquely evil. You can't have those thoughts. It's probably not true, unless... I hate explaining this because all of you understand this intuitively, so I don't know if you're being bad faith when you ask this, or I don't know if you're you're so selective in your application for your intuitions. Haha, <laughs> that was a Vosh sentence. You're so selective in your application for your intuitions that you don't genuinely see something that is so obvious to everybody else. If a, um, let's say that a woman comes into my house and she says, you know, like, oh my God, like I just got brutally like I'm bleeding, like it's so horrible and blah, 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 blah. And let's say the first question I asked is like, oh my God, like that's horrible. Like, did you lead the guy on or something? Now, it's not really a, it's not a wrong question. It's nothing bad. I'm not accusing her of anything technically, right? But if you were to open with that question, there are so many implications. I think this is probably true of most human language. When you say things, there's a lot more unspoken than actually what we say. Right? If I were to lean into Mel's room and I go, hey, Mel, are you hungry? And she's like, yeah, I am. And then I would just like walk away and come back and stream. And she'd be like, what are you, hello? And I'm like, oh, I was just, I just want to know if you're hungry. What? No, if you're asking me if I'm hungry and then I say that I am hungry, the implication is that you're about to do something about that. We're going to go somewhere, you're going to cook something. Like, it'd be really weird, right? So when Hamas kills a thousand plus Israeli citizens and people are like, freedom to Palestine and Israel are, you know, a settler of violence, the, there is a huge implication there. But, but for people to pretend like, oh, well, what's wrong with supporting Palestine? What do you mean, you f retard? There's, there's not anything really wrong with supporting Palestine, but that's not really what we're talking about, right? Yeah. Um, oh, I'm sorry. The, the reason why I get so frustrated about this, though, is that all the lefties know this because you guys talked about, like, centrists providing cover for extremists for so long. You guys would all talk about, like, oh, uh, you know, Dave Rubin provides cover for Nazis and crypto fascism and I see the symbology and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, you can be so into the minutia there. You can be so analytical and so implication based there. But then when it comes to this, like, free Palestine shit, it's like, okay, really, guys? Yeah. I don't know, I think it's done. The New Yorker is one of the few publications where I think that it's just like, it's so good. I've read so many good profile pieces from the New Yorker. I, I feel like I never hear anybody bring the New Yorker up. Am I crazy on that? I feel like I never hear anybody reference this publication, but uh, I, I feel like the New Yorker does a lot of really good work. Loner Box is always great. Loner Box is one of the few like political people that I think I would sign off on for almost anything that he, uh, Almost anything he, t he does, even when we disagree. I think Lauderbox is a super, super reasonable person. Did you see this? J.K. Rowling. We said, never again. The UK was a safe haven. Now, after the biggest massacre of Jews since the Holocaust, British and Jewish children are being advised to hide their identities as they walk to school. I got messages from Kraut, too. I think he said in Vienna, there were, like, I'm being careful. I don't know how much it's turned out, but there were, like, apparently, like, hundreds of Arabs screaming, gas the Jews and shit in the street. <sighs> I wish that, um, I'm just screaming into the void. I'm not screaming into the void. I can either look left and scream into the void or I can go and preach to you guys because you guys already agree with me about all of this. Something that's very scary to me about anti-Semitism that kind of comes in on the same ship as anti-Zionism is big displays of like xenophobia and racism aren't really as scary today in the Western world because we've got like a left that is ostensibly meaning purportedly, but not actually, supposed to fight against these types of ideas, right? That um, if people are being racist or anti-Semitic or whatever, that's okay. We've got like our progressives, we've got our left-wing people to do it, blah, 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 blah. But the problem, and I mentioned this when the Kanye West thing happened, holy shit. The problem, and this, I mentioned this with the, with the NBA basketball players, is people on the left cannot fight people of color. They can't do it. They're incapable. So show me a white guy and show me that he had dreadlocks 15 years ago. That dude's career is over. We're going in on that guy. We're going to take him out, okay? Show me a black guy saying Jews run the entire f***ing world and Yakub created white people. And it's like, well, listen, okay? Remember Tuskegee? Okay? Black people have a right to be upset, you know? Show me, you know, show me, uh, show me Dr. Robert Malone and Joe Rogan and Brett Weinstein. I can get a whole bunch of progressives to say these guys need to be deplatformed from everything because they're anti-vaxxers. 
But then show me a community of black people that are just like, oh, we don't trust the government. We don't want vaccines. And then the left are like, well, I mean, Tuskegee. And it's like, yeah, it's the left is toothless when it comes to combating or counteracting minority racism or minority anti-Semitism or minority xenophobiaism. Xenophobiaism? Xenophobia. I don't need an ism at the end of that. But yeah. To be fair, complete, people were completely shitting on Kanye and Kyrie. I think older, more mainstream people are, but I don't think younger left-leaning people are who are increasingly becoming more and more of the online conversation, right? Older people will because there's like an age threshold, probably what, like 45 years old and up, where you're like automatically pro-Israel. That was just like the, it's just like the de facto political position of everybody in the United States. Um, I don't know, since like Clinton, on like it just, it just is. Right, but now as people have gotten older, younger people don't give a f about Israel. You've got minorities. You've got free Palestine. You've got bad U.S. foreign policy. You know, we went from you know we went from Clinton and um, uh, Clinton and Bosnia and all of, and Libya and Gaddafi and all that to you know to Bush and 9/11 and all of that to Obama. After Bush, here's the thing that people don't consider. Okay. People say that military industrial complex, the people don't matter, you know, the military industrial complex drives foreign policy. That is not true. Foreign policy or foreign meddling became very unpopular uh, in the United States after Iraq and Afghanistan. It became insanely unpopular. The stance from Obama, right? Because Obama, one of the reasons why Obama was elected, right, was to close down, was to close down Guantanamo, get us out of the Middle East. And people keep talking about that, you know? Uh, Trump was supposed to get us out of the Middle East. He never did. Yeah, the, the U.S. public just became very, very anti- uh, imperialistic anti any foreign intervention after after Bush, I would say. And then that's definitely translated more to the younger generations and like the newer breed of conservative and even arguably maybe the newer-ish breed of Democrat. Yeah. They shout on Kanye because he's a Trump supporter. If Kanye held more popular left-wing ideas, they wouldn't have went so hard on him. Possibly, yeah. What's the history behind old people and liking Israel? Um, I don't know, actually. I'm not sure. I don't. I don't really know. I can't answer that for you. Why, why is it that um, Cold War era Americans, it just feels like everybody loves Israel. Trump loved Israel and Trump both hate Israel, right? Donald Trump fans fucking hate Israel, okay? They, well, the younger ones do. Probably even some of the middle-aged ones do as well. Um, Donald Trump loved Israel. He moved the fucking embassy to Jerusalem from Tel Aviv, right? Uh, so yeah, I'm not, maybe it's just like a general, I assume you're also saying that some Jews looking white doesn't help. I mean, maybe that helps a little bit. I mean, like, how white or dark even is the average Middle Eastern? Maybe I'm, like, too young, so I'm used to seeing more mixed-race people. But I feel like people have this idea that, like, if you go to the Middle East, everybody is, like, this, you know, super ultra-dark shade of brown. But, like, I've seen a lot of Turkish people. I'm not just saying this because of Hassan. I've seen a lot of Turkish people. It's like, if they told me they were white, I would just believe them. Like, I'd have no f idea. Um, I think there are a lot of people from, I think, Iraq that are relatively fair-skinned. Um, I'm just, thinking, I'm just thinking of people, I'm sure it probably applies to all Middle Eastern countries. I'm just thinking of people that I've known personally. Sometimes their like complexion and facial hair can be a little bit differently, but yeah, I don't know. They don't like scream like, oh my God, you're so... Destiny, a lot of them aren't brown as fuck. That's a stupid Western Central American thing. Look at Train, for example. Yeah, I don't know. Britney's family is from Iraq. Yeah, true. Yeah, Pokemon could pass as, as anything, honestly. <laughs> but... Depends on where they're from. Yeah, of course. It depends on where you're from. It depends on your ethnicity, etc. Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, actually, never mind. That is true. What older people are probably super Israeli Israel stands because of the f Holocaust. <laughs> That's probably why. That makes sense. Um, older people like Israel because they like Jewish people more than Islamic people. Maybe, maybe a little bit of that. But I think I, I think it has probably has more to do with like World War II and the Holocaust. Actually, I think yeah. Oh, and actually, I'm curious how much of it is inf inf how much of it is influenced by the fact that we made like 50 million f movies about World War II. Holy shit! If we have a here's the one bright outline to everything. Okay, the one bright outline on everything. Okay, is if we have World War III, we'll finally have a new war to make movies about. Because goddamn, I don't need more Holocaust shit. Okay, I don't want more World War II shit. I don't need more Black Hawk Downs. Okay, we need a new war. It feels like there haven't been that many movies about like Iraq and Afghanistan, but I guess those were like so much more one-sided or not as epic. I know you had like, was the Hurt Locker Iraq? And then like the Chris Kyle sniper movie was, but like, I don't know. I am curious how black people feel about 
Middle Eastern people being racist. It was a really interesting conversation with Flacco um, that got posted to their channel. I'd never heard that before. Flacco told me he doesn't like it when Myron says the N-word or is racist because he doesn't consider Myron black because Myron is Middle Eastern. And I actually never even thought of that. I just assumed, I mean, I knew that. But for some reason in my mind, he occupies like an African-American, like that's just, that's Myron from Fresh and Fit. But Flacco was like, fuck no, this dude's Middle Eastern. So when he gets up and like calls black people the N-words and blah, 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 he feels like it's way more hateful. Which I thought, was, I thought that was an interesting take. I never really considered it that way before. But I don't know how many black people, because I know that uh, Fresh and Fit has like a pretty big African-American black audience. So I don't know how many people care or think about, yeah, I'm not sure. <clears throat> Destiny we call Indians black. I think in America, we usually use black for African or African-American. I don't think we usually call Indians black. We call them Indian. As opposed to in Europe, you guys call Indians Asians, losers. How do you feel about Biden talking about confirmed pictures of beheaded children? It was later announced that um, he just went off statements from a spokesperson. Yeah, I don't know. I Yeah, like I said, the, the, the dead babies are not a hill to die on. Don't do that. Don't die on that hill, okay? I'm black, my understanding the N would be okay if he didn't hate on black women and culture so much. Oof, that's a big one, yeah. Although a lot of the new blacks, <laughs> which is what low-tier God calls himself, my would probably fall in that camp, like, just avowedly. Is that, that's a word, right? Avowedly? Like, openly and proudly? Avowedly. Um, has been asserted, admitted, or stated publicly. Avowedly. Yeah, kind of close enough. Avowedly just hate black women. We'll say it, I think, but, yeah. I feel like it's even weird that black people born in other countries say the N-word. Like, should KSI be able to say it? True. Was the baby thing confirmed yet? I think there have been, I think there was a French spokesperson and some other, a couple other people that were confirming that the babies were killed. And then, I don't know about the beheading thing yet, though. I've also, I've never heard of or seen people beheading babies. That would be unhinged. Uh, although killing babies is unhinged. But I've seen, no, I don't think I've seen videos of babies being killed either. That would be, that would just be, that'd be pretty wild, but, you yeah. know. There are pictures of burned babies now. Oh, huh. One topic that might be interesting to talk to lefties about is, are younger people fucked economically? I think you said you were interested in the topic. Yeah, I don't know. I think, yeah, I don't know. We can go into that later, but. Did you see Ackman's tweet? No. One journalist who led with the story withdrew his tweet because it wasn't confirmed yet. Yeah, be careful about that. Be careful because all the pro-terrorist people are gonna jump on that so hard and say, look, this is why all of this was fake because this one thing was wrong. I've been asked by a number of CEOs if at Harvard would release, release a list of the members of each of the Harvard organizations that have issued the letter assigning sole responsibility for Hamas's highness acts to Israel so as to ensure that none of us inadvertently hire any of their members. If in fact their members support the letter they have released, the names of the signatories should be made public so their views are publicly known. One should not be able to hide behind a corporate shield when issuing statements supporting the actual terrorists who we now learn have beheaded babies among other inconceivable despicable acts. There's a site that docks them all. I think I think their names should be attached to that. I'm probably not in favor of doxing. Well, maybe in this case, if the doxing is just a name, I think your name should be, if you're making a public statement or public letter like that, yeah, I think of course your name should be attached to it. The signatories have started rescinding their statements. Why? Be based, okay? Here's the thing that I don't like about people saying situations are complex or nuanced. I don't like it when people say that as an excuse not to think about things. Israel-Palestine is complex, but it doesn't do anything to give air or to give voice to that complexity if you're not willing to embrace the complexity. Too many times people will say like, oh, uh, it's complex, or it's, it's, it's a complex issue. It's like, okay, so I don't have any thoughts about it. Okay, no, it is a complex issue, right? Palestinians live in abhorrent conditions, especially in the Gaza Strip. You know, settler expansion and settler violence happens in the West Bank. That's a bad thing, okay? Hamas killing civilians. That's also a bad thing. Uh, Iran is a bad thing. All of it. Just all. No, I'm just kidding. Maybe. Um, but yeah, pe people. Uh, yeah, Piers Morgan is going to come off to me probably somebody that's way too dogmatic. Like, I will say, you know, I'm fighting back against a lot of the leftist attacks against Israel on Twitter that are like, oh yeah, go Hamas, blah, 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 blah. But if somebody comes out and they're like, yeah, like these attacks, it's just terrorist attacks. There's no reason. It's inconceivable that Hamas would be attacking Israel. It's like, is it? Is it inconceivable? Really? People have committed as much or more violence for less. I don't think it's inconceivable. Um, yeah, I think it's important to recognize that not only is it not inconceivable, what does this take? What am I saying, Jay Foley, you don't understand? Mel! 
yeah, no, there is like, these things don't just happen in a vacuum, okay? It's not like Hamas just appeared out of nowhere and now all of a sudden you've got, you know, like terrorist attacks against poor Israel that's not doing anything to Palestinians, et cetera, et cetera. Where were you when you first heard about these attacks? So I'd been in Israel for several weeks and we had just gotten home to, uh, to the United oh, States he wasn't on a Friday morning. Uh, Friday night, obviously, is Sabbath for, for Orthodox Jews. Uh, and it, it also happened to be one of the biggest celebratory days of the year. The Shemini Atzeret Simcha Taurus was a, a two-day, what we call Yom Tov, which means no electricity, really, you can't use your phone, you can't use your computer. Uh, my security team showed up at synagogue on Saturday morning uh, and started informing me of what had happened, and then news was was kind of bleeding through. Do you think Shapiro's going to be a Democrat if some of the QAnon GOP took over and of Israel? I don't know. I had somebody email me an interesting thing about Shapiro and Nikki Haley, that Shapiro had been like a massive Nikki Haley fan for months, and then as soon as Nikki Haley started running, he toned down a lot. Unfortunately, I'm just going to assume, I'm just going to repeat. I might have said this before, I don't remember. Because um, I don't remember who I talked to Armstrong. Armstrong. One of the nice things about, uh, one of the nice things about me, when I debate people, when I have arguments, when I have positions, when I'm doing research for whatever, is because I don't have like any political allegiance, I can be very flexible in terms of discovering the things that I think are correct. So when you come to my stream, and then when I'm doing homework, like I am Stephen Bonnell, AKA Destiny, and I'm trying to figure out what I think is correct and then what I want to believe, and then boom. The difficulty when you're somebody like Ben Shapiro is, no matter how smart he is, no matter how intelligent he is, Ben Shapiro, first and foremost, is a conservative commentator. So at some point, he's gonna have to toe the party line. Right? All the research in the world can come out proving that single-payer healthcare is the best thing in the world, and Ben Shapiro can never acknowledge that. He can't do it. His fame, his name, everything is tied to, I am Ben Shapiro, conservative political commentator. Full stop. Um, and I, and I, think that, I think that's sad because it basically locks him in. Yeah, the same way that he kind of cucks out to Trump, the same way that um, even the Blaze, I think, ended up ultimately. I think, because um, uh, what's his name? Glenn Beck used to be super anti-Trump, but everybody everybody falls in line eventually. When you're a political partisan, you have to. You have to fall in line. Otherwise, what is your career, right? And now, what Ben Shapiro and The Daily Wire are making nine figures a year? A month? A year? In any sane world, you never have people like Ben Shapiro who, from everything that I've seen, Ben Shapiro is one of the few conservative guys who is like a real man who does his shit correctly. He, you know, got a wife, they have children, good family. The way that he talks about his wife is so cute. The check Twitter. That's pretty much in it. I mean, the darkness. You, I love the, I just, I love the way he talks about his wife. The references to like, um, cause he did this before on a show where he speaks like what you're looking for in a healthy marriage or whatever. Or he did this in that thing where like my wife is concerned about like Twitter usage. She says I shouldn't do it anymore. It's, I like the, he, it seems like his wife is an active role in his relationship. Um, as opposed to like, oh, she's just some dumb thought that stays at home and takes care of the kids while I do my shit. So romantic, so respectful, so partner oriented. Seems like they run their household well. He's decently intelligent. He's like a good conservative dude. In no world does a person like that support Donald Trump. That's unhinged, it's insane. On if Donald Trump was a Democratic candidate, People like Ben Shapiro would say, I can't support that man on principle alone. A man of that moral fiber is automatically disqualified from being the leader of my country. That's what he would say. But because it's a Republican and that's the leader and that's and they're conservative, he has to, right? But like that has to eat away at this guy at night. Like, fuck me, dude. And then like I said, I've said this a million times um, and I'm never going to be able to, I'm never going to be able to prove this. But like if Barack Obama, the black dude in the White House was f***ing porn stars and paying them off behind his wife's back while he's already in his third marriage, just because he's black, the, the treatment would have been so different. The treatment would have been so different. Ben Shapiro literally fought tooth and nail against Trump and left Breitbart over the support of Trump. Yeah, but that was when Ben Shapiro was just a big contributor on Breitbart. Also, Breitbart was kind of insane. Breitbart was still alternative media. Breitbart never, ever made it to the level that probably even Steven Crowder is. I don't know. They had like a brief shimmering like moment in the sun and then they disappeared just as quickly. But <clears throat> now that I think Ben Shapiro has a way, way more riding now in his reputation, I don't think he would come out against Trump today in the same way that he did back in the early, early right part days. Oh, and he might've left it with that woman harassment thing anyway, yeah, so. Throughout the day, uh, there, there were various, various sources, sources you know, maids were leaving TVs on, for example, or 
uh, my security team informing me throughout the weekend of what exactly was happening because of the serious security concerns that arise for Jews all over the planet when there's mass terror attack uh, in Israel or, or anywhere else. And, um, and so you know, we were finding out in uh, a lagged time what exactly was happening. Obviously, we couldn't watch the videos. We couldn't see exactly what was happening until we came back online on Sunday night and were hit with the news that at that point, 700 Jews have been murdered today. That number is, uh, has been totaled well over 1,200 Jews have been murdered uh, in, in Israel. We started to see all of the pictures on our TVs. Uh, I obviously, because I'm in touch with, with a lot of people on the ground, first responders, uh, people on the ground in Israel, I started receiving extraordinary levels of, of footage and, and video and audio and, and pictures of what exactly had happened in these places. And um, yeah, I mean, these are, these are images. I've, I've been trying to show them to the audience for, for one very specific reason. Uh, and that specific reason is to, to, to understand what evil is, you have to look in the face of evil. And I, I think that you know, we in the West have a, a peculiar narcissism that we, everyone thinks like we do, uh, that, that we value children in a certain way. And so everyone values children in a certain way. Uh, that that if somebody does something truly terrible or evil, it must be that they're- Put some headphones on, the audio is unbearable. Wait, is it super fucked? Is it like echoey or? Ben left because Trump's campaign manager slightly moved a Breitbart reporter when moving through a crowd and that reporter claimed assault such sexual harassment. It was actually completely retarded on Ben's part. Was it retarded or did he say that he had more potential or more capability to be a bigger name than just like a slave to Breitbart? I mean, I don't remember how big Ben was at the time. He was like pretty big, but. Hi, what's up? Be mm. helpful. Okay, how does this? There was something that quote unquote drove them, so it must be a policy question. Um, but as it turns out, that that is not the case because there's literally nothing I think here is that could drive people in in the West, a normal person, uh, to go and to murder a baby in their crib uh, in in a civilian area to to simply walk in and gun down grandmothers or to rape a woman and drag her back to the Gaza Strip. What, what could drive you to do that? I can't think of anything that would drive me to do that, but there are a lot of people who are not only driven to do that, but but believe full well in the virtue of, of what they're doing. That is a- I also think that um, I would echo uh, Jordan Peterson here. It's a study of these Polish policemen, uh, German policemen who were sent to Poland after the Nazis had marched through Poland and they were sent to police Poland. And they were, you know, decent middle-class guys, essentially, most of whom had been um, hit maturity before Hitler had come to power, so they weren't indoctrinated Nazis, you know, not, not like the Nazi youth types were. And uh, they had to go to Poland and, and be policemen under wartime conditions. And they had a very humane commander, and he told all of them that they were going to have to do things that would be far more brutal in all likelihood than they were normally prepared to do in their, in their, civil, in their role as, as, as non-military policemen but that they could go back to their old job if they wanted to. So it wasn't top-down enforcement of an authoritarian ethos. And Browning documents their transformation from the guy next door, you know, the policeman next door, into people who were taking naked pregnant women out into fields and shooting them in the back of the head. And it's a brutal book because, well, these men, it's like, it just ruined them to do that to themselves. They were physically ill during the process of transformation, you know, and and he does a very good job of documenting how an ordinary person transforms into a, a Nazi murderer. And I had to read that. He said, but don't you compartmentalize it. This is about you, right? This isn't about someone else. When you read history, you think, well, that's about someone else. It's like, unless maybe you're a victim and you identify with the victims. It's a very rare person who reads history and identifies with the perpetrators. But unless you read history and identify with the perpetrators, then you don't understand history at all. And so who wants to understand that? And I get my students, I said, look, I've told them this for 30 years. Here's something you have to understand. If you were in Nazi Germany, the statistical probability is overwhelming that you would have been yep. a perpetrator. Yep. Right? You think you would have rescued Anne Frank. It's like, think again. Those people are very, 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 very rare. They put their lives on the line to do that. They put their families' lives on the line to do that. You think you're one of those people? Really? It's like that. All that means is that you know nothing. You know nothing about yourself. You know nothing about people. You know nothing about politics or economics or history. It's a harsh lesson. It's always really stupid to think that there are some group of people that are uniquely evil. You can't have those thoughts. It's probably not true. Unless you're literally getting a group of people that have been 
like selected for being sociopathic or psychopathic or whatever, pretty much any human being can be driven to pretty much any horrible action. We've seen this in psychology over and over and over again. We've seen this historically over and over and over again. The idea that some group of people are uniquely evil is bullshit. Hamas is not uniquely evil. That's wild, okay? U.S. troops did some really egregious and disgusting stuff in Abu Ghraib, and those are American westernized U.S. soldiers, okay? We saw the pictures of that, of, of people standing naked, of people being tortured, of people having... What, were there like dogs biting people's and stuff? Like that was wild. People, running, U.S. soldiers, running people are making other people running people, right? The idea that like Hamas or the Palestinians or brown people or scary Middle Easterners are some like uniquely evil types of people that nobody could ever be driven that, that's bullshit. And the right environment over especially compounding periods of time, a lot of people can be driven to insane stuff. Um, don't, yeah, don't, this, this, don't subscribe to this stupid idea of some people are uniquely evil. That's ridiculous. And it, the, and the problem with it being ridiculous is it hampers your ability to understand, make predictions about, and then navigate the world, right? Which we all have to do. Human's gonna human. Huh. Different mode of thought, and that is not something you can negotiate with. You've seemed about this, for completely understandable reasons, to have been more enraged than I think I've ever seen you, almost like a simmering volcano as you've talked about this. I want to play a clip from your Daily Wire YouTube channel. You have six million subscribers. And this is part of what was, I thought, a very powerful address that you made there. So powerful. I am a Jew. <laughs> so powerful. Actually, I'm streaming anyway. Let me... Um... Let me just log into my thing so I don't have to watch ads. Oh, hold on. Hey, no, as you've talked about this, I want to play a clip from your Daily Wire YouTube channel. You have six million subscribers. And this is part of what was, I thought, a very powerful address. Oh, fuck, made. hold on. I'm so sorry. Because somebody just linked this. One more thing. What? Are there, is there like this? Why are there OnlyFans girls that are in all of my, D, uh, not my DMs, but my replies now? And... It, it seems like they're not bots, but I don't know if they're guys or if they're seriously OnlyFans girls that like reply to my stuff and then they have like pictures. Is it, are they just like really good AI bots that are promoting OnlyFans now? Is that, it's the new reply girls? I can't tell. It'll be like a girl on Only, or is it ChatGPT? Yeah, I've thought about that. I'm so curious. I need to start DMing them for research. Or managers, yeah, it could be managers too. Yeah, but like there are these, I, there are certainly random like OnlyFans girls like replying in my replies to like serious political things. This has to be a bot. No, this, this, just my two cents. I think this has to be a bot. There's no way that's a real person. Well, but some of them are real because I talked to some of them. I know some of them are real. I don't know. Gid Stanfield, Yuval Harari, has repeatedly pointed out in his book, Human, that cultural identities being wiped out and re-identified as a pattern of human history. Using identity as an argument is not good, in my opinion. I don't know if you were agreeing with me or disagreeing with me, but okay. made there. I am a Jew. Those have been the words of the Jewish people for three millennia. Those were the words of the men, women, and children of Masada. Those were the words of the followers of Bar Kokhba. Those were the words of Jews in Granada in 1066 and the Rhineland in 1096 and Khamenevsky from 1648 to 1657 and Kishinev in 1903 and Hebron in 1929. Those were the words of Jews in Auschwitz and Treblinka. Those were the last words of Daniel Pearl. And those are my words too. They're the words of my parents, the words of my wife, my children. Over the weekend, my people, the Jewish people, were attacked. They're murdered, mutilated, our women were raped, our children were kidnapped. This has happened millions of times before to millions of Jews across history. Jew hatred exists because evil exists, because there are people who have, for literally all of human history, hated the Jews and sought to strike at them. Like, it's such, a, it's such a stupid, it's such a crude and worthless analysis. Like, why do people like Jews? Because it's evil. Bro, come on, really? Somebody donated five dollars said, I've been a Democrat my whole life and I've always voted as such, but as a Jew after seeing the left's support of terrorists, I don't know what to do in the upcoming election. If you're actually, did you say you were Jewish? I've been a Democrat my whole life, oh. Oh, if you're Jewish, how the fuck are you supporting conservatives in the United States? Depends on what kind of Jew you are, I guess, but like, I feel like most Jewish values tend to align more with like Democrats or left-leaning stuff. That's why they tend to be more left. Or it's because they want to control the world, but. Well, they are weak. 
who have blamed the Jews for their own problems, who have crafted complex conspiracy theories about the supposed power of the Jews, who have sought to destroy, to murder, to mutilate, to rape the Jews, from Pharaoh to Haman, from Hitler to Hamas. What reaction have you had to that, Ben? I think the reaction has been pretty strong and, and overwhelmingly positive. I, I think there are, there are a lot of people, not only Jews, mostly my audience is people who are not Jewish, obviously, who, who understand the history uh, of the Jewish people, who understand what it means when, when the greatest slaughter of Jews on a mass scale happens since the Holocaust, and, and who understand that it is inextricably linked to a history of anti-Semitism that goes back thousands of years. I mean, this extermination level anti-Semitism, what you see from Hamas, it's literally part of their charter. Uh, and so the attempt to, to... Like, Hamas is definitely anti-Zionist, they're definitely anti-Semitic and everything, but like, you can't just blame it all on anti-Semitism. It's so dumb. It's so naive. Ugh. Treat them as a normal political body, obviously, is foolish. I, I think that a lot of people resonated to that. It's the, certainly the strongest I felt about any... Is the debate with Ben still happening? Do you think this will come up? That's a month... Bro, a month and a half from now? That's like 10 worlds away in terms of internet news cycles. Trump was very supportive by moving the embassy to Jerusalem. That's why Jews are supportive of the USA, right? Are they en masse? It seems like the values that Jewish people have, which is largely like social progressivism, education, uh, equality, and all this bullshit or whatever, like those, I feel like those tend to be, but then again, that could just be me selecting from my circles. I, I could be wrong. I don't know. I could be wrong. Whoever said that is retarded, Jews voted like 70% for Biden. Oh, okay. anything that happened in my lifetime since 9-11 um, as an American uh, since 9-11. And uh, as a Jew, obviously, I, I'm, I'm watching as people that I know, people I'm friends with, are, are getting called up to go to the military and serve in Gaza, try to protect uh, the, the Israeli citizenry who are Jews and Arabs, who are Christians and Jews and Muslims. Uh, and uh, It's the same with Christians. Their values are a lot more left-leaning, but they support the right. No, 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 no. Hold on. When I'm talking about, when I talk about Jewish values, I'm talking about Jews. I'm not talking about Judaism, the religion. I don't know what the fuck the Torah, I don't know any of that. I'm just saying that Jews as a people, they seem to be a group of people that generally support things like, again, I can be just stereotyping based on the thing I know, but like Jewish people seem to place very, very high value on like education and um, like taking care of your shit financially, uh, you know, having like a good and healthy household, like these types of things, like, the, like it feels like there are values that Jewish people have. And this is kind of one of the reasons why when you stick them in like a bunch of different places, it seems like they do really well. Or you can just say it's all genetics. But like, it seems like Jewish values from Jewish people, I don't know about the religion of Judaism. Fuck, I feel like most Jews have these values, even if they're secular Jews. Um, when I talk about Christians, I would never talk about the Bible. Most Christians don't know anything about the Bible. Um, also, Christians are a really, really, really broad group of people. I think they're a bit harder to stereotype than, like, Jewish people in the West. But maybe that's not fair either. I don't know how many Jewish people are in America. That's a good, Well, let's look. <laughs> how many Jews in America? 4.8 million Jews? Yeah, we can stereotype them. <laughs> It's mostly education, unironically. Yeah, I know the education part is a really big part of Jewish, um, of like things that Jewish people tend to value, so. But but that might not be true through all group, uh, all Jewish groups, like maybe Orthodox Jews or something don't care as much. I'm not sure, I don't know. Um, and, you know, I'm watching as, the, you know, there, there are people out there who are rallying on behalf of, of actual terrorist groups murdering children. I mean, it's, it's an amazing, uh, it's an amazing, uh, I would say, exposure of, of Ignorance at, at, at best, ignorance at best, and Jew hatred at worst. Do you have any personal connection to anyone who's, whose life was taken? Uh, I don't. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm lucky. Uh, I would say that I, I have, um, certainly I know a lot of people who do. So well, the, the way to, to talk about the Jewish community in general, there are not very many Jews on the planet. Uh, due to conspiracy theories, people tend to think there are tens of millions of Jews on the planet. The, the grand total number of Jews <laughs> on planet Earth is about 15 million. Damn. About 7 million who live in the state of Israel. There are about 6 million who live in the United States. And what that means is that in general society, you think, you know, seven degrees of Kevin Bacon, you, with, with seven degrees of, of connection, you can find anyone. Uh, in, uh, among, among Jews, that, that's one, that number is one. So I, I certainly know an, an enormous number of people who, uh, who have had people who are kidnapped, who have had people who are murdered. I certainly know personally an enormous number of people who are on the ground right now. Uh, I know Americans who are, who are in Israel with me who decided to stay over the last day of the Yom Tov over the, over the holiday uh, and ended up basically getting stuck there because the, the airport was shut down because of rocket attacks. And, uh, and when the call went out to everybody with medical training to, to show up 
to, to help. I, I know American doctors who showed up at the Gaza border to simply set up triage stations and help people out. So, I mean, it is, it's a very small community. It's a very close-knit community, obviously. You've spoken a lot about Hamas before, uh, called them evil. Uh, you d did a second video called Make God Avenge Their Blood, in which you said that Hamas, in some ways, they are worse than Nazis, which some viewed as a very provocative statement. Why did you say that about them? The, the Nazis, I mean, uh, here's a phrase I'll, I'll never use again, at least the Nazis. So uh, at, at least the Nazis uh, attempted to hide their crimes. Uh, so, so the Nazis obviously mechanized death. They had Einsatzgruppen uh, units that, that drove up to, to Jewish villages and would mow people down. Um, and then they would bury them and then they would try to hide the crimes. And it took, you know, the Nuremberg team years to, to undig all of that material. In this particular case, you have Hamas terrorists who are murdering Jews in their beds and then live streaming it and, and celebrating it and bragging about it and, and talking about how incredible it is and blasting that sort of stuff out. I mean, the videos that I've been showing on my show, a lot of them are coming directly from Hamas. I mean, it's Hamas that, that is taking contemporaneous video of this sort of stuff. And that, that's a whole new level of evil I mean, that, that, to, to celebrate this sort of stuff, to treat it as a triumph. I mean, I think the thing that that, that people really have to realize here is this is not a military operation. Mm. This was not a military operation. I mean, people have compared this to, for example, the 1973 Yom Kippur War. That was an awful moment in Israel's history when it was taken by surprise by the combined Arab armies around it. But that was a military operation with a military objective, which was to seize territory. This is not a military operation with a military objective. This was this is an operation directed specifically at civilians. And, and when we see death in Gaza, which we're going to see, and the images are gonna be horrifying and terrible, it is important to understand that the reason that that is happening is not just because Hamas crossed the border and murdered a bunch of civilians in their beds, but also because Hamas literally hides its weaponry behind civilians. Israel yeah. is currently right now sending out messages to Gazan civilians telling them to get out of particular areas. And Hamas is sending out full scale messages telling people to ignore those messages and to stay where they are. Now, Hamas is is the. the I swear, Destiny is so autistic. He'll see a woman who just had her baby murdered, call the murderer a murderer. Or a monster, and he'll be like, "Ugh, oh, what a fucking stupid analysis." He most likely has some sociopathic disorder. That doesn't make you a monster. You can't. What are you talking about? This is a troll, right? This has to be a troll. You're banned. Okay. He's the guy's name is Smartest Chatter. That must be a troll. There's a reason why their headquarters were for years located underneath a hospital. I mean, it's the the, the what, what they what they they understand that the West again has a peculiar narcissism where we think we would never put our military our military hardware below a hospital, that'd be insane. Um, and so if Israel blows up a hospital, it must be that Israel's doing that because they're targeting civilians. Fuck, I read this on a couple of things. Can somebody confirm or deny? Is it true that the largest hospital in Gaza is also like the headquarters of Hamas's military operations? Is that actually true? Um, largest hospital, Gaza, Hamas military. Fuck. Does anybody have Does anybody have like a link to that so I can see if that's actually true? Cuz if so, that's pretty wild. Oh, here it is. Hold on. Al-Shifa Hospital, properly known as Dar Al-Shifa Hospital, is the largest uh, medical complex and central hospital in the Gaza Strip, located in the neighborhood of North Rimal in Gaza City, in the Gaza Governorate. In 2014, the hospital was described as a de facto headquarters for Hamas. The hospital was reported by Amnesty International to have been used by Hamas to torture and murder dissidents. The current director of the hospital is Dr. Muhammad Abu Sal Salmiya. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. Well... Hamas knows that. That's that's why they're doing it. That's why they're doing it. They literally hide their rocket launchers behind apartment buildings in the hope that Israel will strike back and have to kill civilians in the process. Israel cares significantly more about civilian casualties in Gaza than Hamas ever has. One of the, I mean, there have been so many horrendous uh, images and videos. The, the poor girl from the music festival taken away on the motorbike was just uh, bone chilling to watch. Um, I, I saw something on CNN yesterday with Jake Tapper where he's interviewing the relative of uh, a grandmother's grandmother who was murdered and Hamas posted the video of her being murdered onto her Facebook page so her family would watch it. I mean, when you hear that, it's sort of unconscionable. It's, it's kind of beyond 
depravity. This is inhumanity. I mean, Piers, you're in the business of words and I'm in the business of words and I've found myself repeatedly over the last few days unable to, to find- Do they talk about anything of substance here or is it just gonna be a circle jerk for 46 minutes about how horrible this is? Is that, do we do anything or? Opinion on this, should public figures rather state their position or remain silent when it's about serious geopolitical issues? Let's see. <clears throat> Weird as fuck to see so many people coming up with statements about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict as if they need to comment on it. Could we please stop this weird culture around expecting people with no relevant backgrounds or education to talk about world events slash politics? I also want to add that I support anyone who wants to criticize those honestly, but I'm really talking about these weird, almost PR statements that keep coming out of, like, NBA teams as if the world needs to hear what a sports team thinks about geopolitics. I can see arguments for both sides of it, but I think I largely agree. Like, I think it's kind of cringe to hear, like, I don't need... Like Pokemon's take on Israel Palestine, or I don't need like the the New York Yankees take on, you know, Israel Palestine. Um, I think that the issue you were shitting on Pokies yesterday for being quiet. Well, I think the issue that I have is that like I feel like this has to be all or nothing. You either make these types of statements or you don't. But it's pretty stupid when like sometimes you make the statements and sometimes you don't just based on like what's like the most PR friendly thing to do. If you want to have a take, I keep saying Pokey because she's just like the most kind of like brand friendly person. I'm not like attacking her personally, but um. Yeah. Also, why is it that every single time I mention, um, who's the abuser girl? I want to say Zoe Quinn. That's the name that popped in my head. It's not that. The one, um, Nico. Every single time I mention Nico, which is like once a year, it always goes to LSF. It gives the impression that I talk about this girl constantly. Well, who the fuck clips me on these things? <laughs> Jesus. Ethan, going full nuclear on Twitter. Enjoy your drugs and being a sex worker. Hamas would kill you on the spot. <laughs> True. This guy was harassing the fuck out of Ethan prior to this. A lot of people think that Ethan just like attacked this guy out of nowhere, but I think Ethan might have fucked up because this, this guy's tweet was like five months old, but you know. He deleted that tweet though, didn't he? I think he did, yeah. Your wife should enlist again. I would love to see her featured in some Palestinian guy's vlog. This is unhinged. Is there a link to that guy's tweet? What engagement did he get on that? It's mandatory conscription as well. Do you think terrorist attacks like what's going on in Israel is a good argument for looser gun control? I don't know. I have no idea what the state of gun control is like in Israel. I have no clue. I feel like I heard all the time people saying like, oh, in Israel, everybody has rifles because they're all part of the IDF. <laughs> Apparently that's not the case, so... H3 mods removed post of Frogan admitting Hassan has said the same if not worse that there's a Palestinian they're trapping anti-Semitic towards Ethan. It's not in public and they in private and they both say their views broadly agree. Then I don't think you've been watching Hassan's stream for the last since Sunday. Because Hassan has said the same shit I have said. If not more extreme than what I've said. So why is it only an issue when I see something like that? Where Hassan- Are you approving of the personal appearance attacks against Frogan? Nope. This whole, like, if we start seeing, like, anti-Semitic violence, like, pop up around the world, that would be super scary. Because I don't know who defends the Jews at that point. Old people? Like, the younger populist right don't give a fuck. I don't think. The far left one will never criticize brown people doing violence, ever. Ethan and Frogan, this was brutal, holy shit. People are talking about me unfollowing Frogan, so I'll explain why. Since she wants to talk about it, murdering children and burning families alive in their safe houses is not a revolution, it's a massacre. And if you think that's what a revolution is supposed to look like, I'm terrified for your idea of an American revolution, true. Oh, this comment on Hassan's fucking subreddit, if this is real and not like a psyop, you can't tell what a lot of these commie types. I don't know any better, so I'm just going to make a guess here. Maybe he's trying to show the swastika, as in Israel is doing what Nazis did, or Israel is Nazi. I honestly don't know. It could very well be a Nazi in disguise trying to take advantage of the situation. 46 upvotes. Oh my god. No shot. Instagram got a new status update, and that's the first thing I see from someone attending law school. Unfollow me if you're Jewish, please. Jesus. Imagine saying, like, unfollow me if you're black. 
Your bio is missing some stuff that Alex's has. I'll let you do the math. I've lived overseas for half my life. I know the world well. Eh, I have a Palestinian. I have Palestinian LGBTQ friends. I've been to gay clubs in the Middle East. There's a great deal of homophobia, but it's not you wouldn't survive levels in many places, including Palestine. Exactly. LGBT people are much safer in Gaza than Florida or Texas, for instance. I don't know if I'm buying that one, Chief. I like how she thought this tweet was an own. Gonna start asking white people if they condemn every mass shooting that happens. Like, do you expect us to say that the mass shootings were from freedom fighters that are representing white interest? What? Okay, I'm a person, right? I'm a person. I know a lot of streamers are like sociopaths. I know a lot of people, uh, streamers are narcissists. That's not me, okay? I still very, like, a lot of the times, like, okay, with hate on the internet, like, call me fat, whatever, okay? Fat, ugly, somebody call me pimple face, okay, cool, whatever. All right? I'm, I'm used to shit like that. But, like, having literal thousands, I'm like, not even an exaggeration, thousands of people coming at you calling you a terrorist, you're just like, what the fuck? I mean, she, you deserve it. Like, you deserve it 100%. It's crazy to me. And then people want to defend him and be like, yeah, he's emotional, he's this, he's that. Yeah, me fucking too, bro. Me fucking too. But you don't see me going out there calling you fucking names. Right or wrong? It's wild to me. I'll never understand this. And I've accepted that I this is just an L that I have to take because I'll never... Nobody ever agrees with me who thinks this. I just don't understand the mentality of people like, oh, I should be able to tweet whatever I want publicly and nobody should be able to engage with it in like a mean way. Or if like too many people engage with it in a way that's bullying me, like it's not fair. It's like, bro, you're literally going out and screaming something into the social media void. Like whatever happens, happens. As long as people are like doxing you or something like, yeah, of course, if you say something crazy or stupid, people are going to harass you. I never understand the defense that people are willing to run for these smaller creators when they're like, oh yeah, like it's just not fair. She's getting so much hate. Like, yeah, she stepped into the public square and she started saying shit. Of course, people are going to respond. Like. When do you think you'll debate Andrew Wilson again? It seems to be the your best content in terms of everybody losing their minds. That guy is like, he's just like so wacky. He's just like a waxter, okay? That whole supply demand argument they try to make about women leaving the workforce was just like, bro, I'm good on that. Like, he's old enough to almost be my dad. What does that have to do with anything? What does that mean? He's not your dad. Why, what? I think Jewish people are the most influential people on the planet, and I think a lot of Western online socialism and communism is rooted in jealousy, so it tracks that they dislike Jewish folks. I don't know if that's the case, but okay. Oh, thanks. Be mailful. Someone said it on the subreddit, but when you think of her as just a normie and not a political person, all of it just seems like cloud chasing and attention. Yeah, but she's like a Hassan wannabe orbiter, basically, isn't she? She's like a lesser form of denims or whatever. But I think she's like a mega Hassan Sim. Sorry, I was racist. Racist. I was I'm emotional. And then like, can be like, yeah. Does she live in America? She's twenty-seven. Oh, then no. Ethan can't be your dad. I don't even think Ethan's forty yet. Where did I call him names? You called him names just like he called you. I didn't call him anything though. The worst part about all this is he said this with that bald head and no eyebrows and thousands of people had to see it. Stop. Like I said, if me and Ethan have anything in common right now, it's the fact that we're both bald headed, okay? We're both bald headed. You said bitch. I call everybody bitch though. It's part of my vocabulary. <clears throat> Why are you so focused on H3 recently? is a bit too much. I know the videos with H3 on the title do well, but damn. Because it's like the center battle of like liberal versus leftist right now, probably on the internet. I can't think of any other show that's gonna have as much conflict as Leftovers tonight with Ethan and Hassan. That's gonna be like a 50,000 view podcast, which is normal for Ethan, but a big deal for Leftovers. <clears throat> But I mean, I feel like the H3H3 subreddit is like the front line for 
the kind of like leftist revolution takeover fight back from like the liberal ideology. I, I, like, I can't think of another place that's like that. Do you ever consider going on Joe Rogan? Yeah, if you wanted me to, obviously. In your opinion, is the rhetoric of the likes of Netanyahu the anti that anti-Israel is the same as anti-Semitism causing the rise of anti-Semitism? I don't know. I, I mean, I'm not going to listen to Netanyahu for what I should think on any of this, obviously, right? Yesterday, your subreddit felt like it was the H3 subreddit. Yeah, there's a lot of posting about it, but I mean, hey, it's like spicy drama, okay? Hey, spicy drama. It is a bit much right now, though. Okay, hold on. Is this real? You are a ghoul, fucking freak. I'm the freaking ghoul, and yet you are still refusing to criticize Hamas. I haven't killed any children. I don't know what it is, but there are certain insults when people use them. They probably don't have much good to say. Like, racial slurs is one of them. Um, ghoul is also another. I don't know why, but anytime I see people that use ghoul as an insult, they're almost always, like fucking losers or people that I would never want to I don't know why I don't know what it is about that word I have no idea and our four families don't burn anyone alive lately who's a freaking the ghoul why do you have harsher words for me than Hamas was it hard to type that bullshit with one hand jerking off to the thought of queer Muslims being murdered bro what the fuck I'm pulling in your corner what was I wrong about this is a revolution you're supporting right is don't go ever go anywhere near Hamas because your life will be 100% danger am I wrong genuinely oh ghoul was one of Chapo's favorite insults oh interesting oh, okay <laughs> that tracks. Bro. Notice how he can talk normally to men? <laughs> Wait, talk normally to men? Wait, wasn't Ethan just roasting that guy? Telling him that if he went near ha uh, Hamas, he'd be killed? Why does she make this about sexism? Oh my god, bro. <laughs> is she not, she's not actually about to do that, is she? No way. But, but to me... She did this I'm a woman shit for hours, bro. Normally to men. But goes on. Like, I don't want to pull a woman card either, but it's just like, he can talk normally to men, but he goes on like an hour fucking tangent calling me every fucking name in the book. Makes you think. <laughs> Not really. No, it doesn't. Makes you think. It doesn't at all. You'll get 50 subs for one chat. Who's in the sub? What was his ISIS comment again? Why didn't you send him a DM? Why didn't you send a DM? Oh, yeah. Because content. You think leftovers is over? Probably not, dude. He'll probably be able to talk to Hassan like a normal person without calling him names. Not a mistake for the five. Because Hassan's a man. Hassan's his friend. You know, Hassan has been saying shit that's more, uh, Gregory, thank you, more radical than I have. You're going to laugh when her simp friend comes in and admits he called her and told her that her tweet sounded bad and she looks like she sounds like she's about to hang up on him. Wait, really? Dusty, in the Hadith, it is actually frowned upon to be fat. One is supposed to only fill their stomach with one-third food, one-third water, and leave one-third empty. Is <laughs> that, which Hadith is that? Uh, ten dollars. <clears throat> I'm only mad that I'm hearing people condoning what happened in, to Israel. Understanding what led to events is understandable, but being vainglorious is another. How's being extremely susceptible? Okay. Are you going to watch Leftovers live today? Probably not. I'm going out to eat with your mom. I've said in the last like fucking four days. You know, but because I'm me, I'm an outwardly obvious Muslim woman. I, I'm gonna be honest, for a long time, I didn't even know she was Muslim. I thought she wore all this stupid shit for, it was like a fucking costume. Oh, wait, you're Muslim? And I guarantee you're not, I can predict it. And then if Hassan goes into, if they talk about it on leftovers, which I'm assuming they're going to, um, I thought she was just cold. <laughs> yeah, I'm so cold. To be fair, your own rebuttal tonight has been, I was just joking. Yeah, I was joking about the IDF joke. Which wasn't his focal point at all. But dad's from Lebanon. She's born in the USA. Oh, yeah. But I'm, I'm going to tell you how it's going to go, okay? Depending on whether or not Hassan knows what happened. Okay? Like it's happened before. People can pull shit out of their ass about of things that have happened. That didn't happen. To over-exaggerate what I said. And they're going to be like, oh, yeah, whatever. Oh, like, oh, whatever. She did this wrong. 
Going to Miami this weekend. Any recommendations for places to eat? Nope. Good luck. Oh, yeah, yeah. Since you said you'll stop saying bitch, can you stop with your hey, mom jokes too? Um, I'll try to like balance it out with your dad jokes so that it's fair. Oh, guests, true. Streets of Rogue too. This looks awesome. Oh, I was gonna say something earlier. I just remembered. Um, I wish there was like. This is gonna sound mean. I don't mean to sound elitist. I wish there was something like a like an internet too, where you could like pay, like a hundred bucks. We'll say a hundred dollars a month for access, to internet too. And there should be no, like, sponsored links or anything. Uh, I'm actually at the point to where I have to go to, like, page two of, like, Google shit. People were asking me why I was using Bing earlier. This idea of, like, um, if I want to get, like, a best laptop battery, I am so tired of sponsored links dominating so much of all the pages. And then if it's not sponsored links... Like, the next thing I get linked are these random fuck websites who just put out random top 10 lists that I think are actually just generated by bots. I don't even know if real people do any of this. Um, yeah, like, there are so many of these, like, a PC mag might have okay articles, but, like, I don't know. God, there are so many, like, random, like, sponsored links and things to show up. It happens on Amazon as well, and I fucking hate it. It's gotten to the point to where Google is becoming, like, a Reddit archive. Like, if I actually want to know something about the best laptop battery, I have to start going to, like, oh, well, what do, what do people on Reddit think? And then I have to, like, go from here. This is really fucking sad. This is really sad. Uh, I don't know. I don't like this. I don't like that um, Google has just become an index for other sites now, and I can't actually use Google itself to search. I'm just using it to search, like, Reddit or something like that. People are saying get you block and you're missing the point. I'm not talking about just the sponsored links. I'm talking about like the overall structure of the internet used to be way different. The internet used to be like a worldwide web. It was like thousands of different websites that got magically connected with a search engine. But now the internet is like 10 websites that just get indexed on Google. And if you're too stupid to realize that, then Google just becomes a sponsored links directory. I, mean, I don't know. I just think that's really sad. I think it's stupid. Video game stuff is a sea of useless information written by AI. Yeah, I've noticed that, especially for like smaller games. If I'm looking for like triangle, triangle strategy, uh, best characters. Bro, whenever I search for shit like that, I get so many random fuck websites that I don't even know. Like what is game8.co or inverse.com? And like, if you read a lot of this stuff, like it feels like it was written in like two minutes by like some random guy that's maybe, like look, half the site is even empty. I don't even write shit about the characters. I noticed this when I was like searching for stuff for this game too, a lot. I was like, bro, what the fuck? There are wiki, I use it for monster hunter shit. Oh, okay, I didn't even realize. Yeah, I don't know. I just feel like chat GBT websites, true actually. Even IGN has, like, dog shit spam articles and stuff like this, though, but... Yeah, I don't know. Ugh. And they start out with, like, five paragraphs of dog shit that doesn't do what you want. Yeah, I don't know. Whatever. Ugh. This is because of AI aggregation. It'll get worse and worse in a way. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Have you actually read any of those articles? Are you judging them by their headlines? No, yeah, I do read them. When I'm trying to, like, if I'm actually researching for a topic, I do end up reading them, and then I just see a lot of, like, dog shit information. This is the world that Pisco wants. True. Absolutely true.
doing press. I don't know why uh, Joe Biden is doing press conferences in the Rose Garden talking about something other than America's role as leader of the free world. If I was president of the United States, I'd have the team in the Situation Room and direct the Joint Special Operations Command to stand up special forces and immediately prepare to deploy into Gaza. <laughs> what the fuck? Bro, you're unhinged. What the fuck are you talking about? We can't... America, we do not want troops in the in Israel. That is just not a good thing for America. I think the entire rest, the entire rest of the Middle East is going to be looking at that situation a lot differently if U.S. soldiers are like openly on the ground there. Well, look, I I, I don't know why Joe Biden's doing press conferences in the Rose Garden talking about uh, something other than. Um, America's role as leader of the free world and and the fact that there are Americans have being held hostage in Gaza I'm telling you what if I was president of the United States I'd had the team in the situation room I'd have I'd have directed the joint special operation Hold on Sonny said this I don't want to go over all this guy's shit I read some of it um, That big poster yesterday in the LSF area as both an attorney and a destiny viewer his Nico wall take is one of his worst takes and it's because he has no experience with practicing criminal defense my areas of practice are family law and criminal defense. Unfortunately, that means I have to deal with a lot of criminal domestic abuse cases and civil protective disorders. Destiny will say, quote unquote, she beat him up so badly that the police actually came and arrested her. And then he says, you do not have to beat someone up badly to be convicted of domestic abuse assault. Domestic abuse assault only requires that one of the parties being blah, 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 blah. Now, I dug through this guy's profile a little bit because the way that he writes here, it sounds like he's not an attorney and he's not a lawyer at all. Um, when I say that you have to hurt somebody so bad to be like charged with something, what I mean is that oftentimes, and I don't know, I don't want to say maybe I'm wrong because I, I know I'm right here. When you're beating something up or when people are fighting or stuff is going on, um, cops exercise a lot of discretion when it comes time to arresting somebody or when it comes time to, or when the DA wants to press charges against somebody, right? The idea, like, there are going to be degrees of severity. You can break laws, and if it's not that big of a deal, especially when it's, like, one witness crimes, which one person witness another, it's not like the cops are going to show up and be like, oh, he screamed at you right in your face, and it's like, oh, we're going to arrest you right away, we're going to blah, blah, blah. The severity of everything going on, the types of calls you get, absolutely fucking matter. I don't know what this guy's background is in law for him to say, like, oh, well, as a practicing attorney, I know what the code of the law is here. That's great, chief. The code of the law also says, I, I think you can get, like, traffic uh, infractions if you've got things hanging off your fucking rearview mirror. Most cops will take you to take it off. They won't actually write you a ticket for it. Like the idea that he would cite the law there and say like, "Oh, well, this is one hundred percent blah blah blah." That's, but that's not how it works, realistically. I, I I try to read through that guy's stuff, but then at the end, I think he even admitted he didn't even know the details of any of that case. I don't know why the fuck was he a Pasco alt? Is he? I don't know. Maybe I'm not sure. But yeah, I don't know. That guy was he, he read retarded. <clears throat> Operations command to stand up special forces and have them immediately be oh and then i also read a quick thing on my server too where people were saying that the blm chicago chapter putting out that statement was actually fake news because they're not connected to blm the organization what that's not how blm works why did you guys get hoodwinked by that blm the org which is like a scamming org the idea that that works that oh they don't represent us uh sorry that's exactly how blm works it is disconnected chapters that work they could work with the main org or they couldn't that's how that is i mean my understanding is i dig a little bit maybe i can dig more my understanding is that that organization is a um it was a practicing chapter they arranged events they did stuff in chicago that's blm right it might not be the blm organization but no like anybody can call themselves blm if they want and then organize under that moniker and then gather people and do things and, and do activism or whatever Right. That's but that's what BLM wanted. So, I mean, like, yeah. Man, to stand up special forces and have them immediately be prepared to deploy into Gaza uh, and, and tell uh, tell Hamas, uh, you either give up all the American hostages, give up all the Israeli hostages or we are going in with IDF forces and we're going to bring them home. Yeah, I don't know how that one's going to work out, chief, but. Milking, 19901. Thanks for the gift to somebody. Pence thinks he's playing Fortnite. True. Leftovers in 15 minutes. Rip.
I think BLM said the Chicago thing was some black nationalist Muslim thing. Okay. Do you think that, that can't be a BLM chapter? I mean, we can go dig more into it if we want, I guess. It'd be good to. Um, it's always good to do more research. If it's just like a random guy, that's fine, but... Or then that would actually be fake news. It's literally just like a random thing, but, you know. You see when I talk to an Israeli? No, I'm good. Maybe in the future, we'll see. Why do you say that BLM Global Org is a scamming org? They've been very transparent with their finances since all the scam allegations came out. My understanding is that there were people that were actually convicted for scams relating to taking in money and spending. Or are you saying that since those convictions, now they're clean? Maybe. I mean... Did you see that France banned a pro-Palestine protest? Yeah, France is on... <laughs> yeah. But I've heard that there's been a lot of people doing marches. I keep saying I've heard. We should like bring it up. Fuck, if I was at home, I'd be Googling stories for all those my shit likes too much to make me want to. But... How do you feel about American soldiers participating in Israel to fight in Gaza as volunteers the same way they've done that in Ukraine? I mean, I guess if you want to go volunteer and fight somewhere, that feels really weird. I still don't know how they were allowed to do that in Ukraine. I just don't understand the structure of U.S. military or U.S. presence like... I don't understand that at all. I don't. I feel like you shouldn't be able to volunteer for another country's armed services and fight for that country. I just don't understand how you can do that as a citizen of a country. I don't get that. So, but, but apparently you can do it, so yeah, I'm not sure. Or maybe, I don't know if there's precedence for that or what that is, yeah. Surely they're ex-U.S. military. I mean any U.S. citizen. It would. It feels like to me a qualifier of being a citizen of a country should be that like you don't participate in any military operations with another country. I just don't. I just that feels like that should be a thing. But I don't know. Maybe there's like really good reasons why that. What I my thought there is stupid. I don't know. Maybe. You know. <clears throat> they aren't actual U.S. soldiers. I'm not talking about actual U.S. soldiers. I'm saying U.S. citizens. I'm saying U.S. citizens probably shouldn't be able to go to other countries around the world to participate in military operations. I just don't understand why that would ever be the case. You can't Hatch Act prohibits. Okay. Sound on. This is in London. Nice. This video is old, I'm pretty sure. Oh, is there a community notes on it? Oh, it's from Charlie Kirk. <laughs> so maybe it is fake, yeah. A couple videos were posted. Um, the past couple days have been community noted that ended up being fake, so. Have you looked into Jenks' argument that naturalized citizens can be president? No, good lesson, good luck for him, okay? Hot take before leftovers. Hassan will be extremely passive, have issue finding words to describe his views, and not saying what he actually thinks towards Ethan. Yeah, but Ethan is really good at kind of asking questions to kind of out to out him, I think, you know? But who knows? We'll see. All right. I love you guys. I'll be back tomorrow.